What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the second edition episode duo of Keeping It EPL. What a great first episode we had, Matthew Sells. Don't you agree? We did. We had a good one. Um, I would say my hope for the outcomes for my teams were better than the actual outcomes for my teams. So there's <laughs> that. You had a good week with your team. I did, um, yes. Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of a gift. I mean, it, nothing's a given, I guess, but that was one of the higher odds. Yes. Um, uh, Tottenham's already a meme in week one. So, <laughs> so there's that. The yeah. new logo for Tottenham is instead of the chicken, instead of the hot spurs, you can see on my quarters up here, mm -hmm. uh, they've replaced it with Ange bent over, uh, <laughs> exasperated at the end of. Yeah, what a, that one. game was a weird game, to say the least. I mean, Very weird. Spurs came out like they were on a mission. They looked, you know, excited they were going up and down the field got a goal early and then Madison looked like he really wanted to show it to his former team yeah and then all of a sudden just they just a team in Leicester City who you know they have nothing really they have no money <laughs> they, have... Right. they already have a manager asking for more stuff before this yeah actually started they look just not even you know inspired at all in that first 25 30 minutes of that game and all of a sudden the Spurs just let them back in it and they started it, it was almost like the team swapped jerseys. Yeah, it was really weird to watch. And of course, they got the the tying goal, and it ended up being a draw, which was a surprise, really. Um, so yeah, man, I'm sorry. That was yeah, <laughs> that was weird to watch. He has to go one Premier League title to zero, which is factually not true. But yeah, you, maybe since you've been alive, but you know, <laughs> right. um, why not? At least Spurs haven't been relegated since he's been on their team. I don't know. Mm. It, can't talk a whole lot of crap. We tied with Steve Cooper. That's not really <laughs> We know that you love Steve Cooper over there. I... <laughs> He's your favorite. <laughs> He's a lovely gentleman. He's a lovely chap. Nice guy. Um, but prior to this game, in his first 50 games in the Premier League, he had the worst winning percentage of any coach in Premier League history through 50 games. That's a great so. stat to have. We'll we'll leave it. At that. <laughs> There's a reason why Spurs fired him midseason. Yeah. Um, well, so, let's yeah. let's talk about. Obviously, Spurs will be probably one of your biggest losers, and we we'll, we can get back to that. But let's talk about the winners and losers from uh, the first week of the Premier League. Uh, every team was in action, obviously, because it's the first weekend. Um, there's a lot of great games. Actually, it was a really exciting weekend. I had a lot of fun watching all the games. Thank God for Peacock. I still have it from the uh, when I. Got it for, for the Olympics. I just said, I'm just going to keep it for EPL. Why not? Um, it's fun to watch. Who are your biggest winners from the weekend? So um, I know we had a couple of duplicates, so uh, I will let you take the duplicate. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm going to go with uh, a chalk play here. Man City, I thought, was was a winner. Um, yeah. To me, yeah. not only did they get the win. They looked uh, really good doing it. Against Stanford Bridge, they or against Chelsea at Stanford Bridge, they clearly weren't at full strength, right? They don't have um, Rodri back, mm -hmm. so you know the, the last year when Rodri didn't play, they lost three of the four games. Mm -hmm. So there's that. They you know had I would say probably a B minus performance in in most things. Some of their passing was great, and then some of the defense they gave Chelsea way too much room. If Nico Jackson wasn't allergic to scoring goals. <laughs> They would have been a, lot, a closer game. He has Darwin um, Nunes disease. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, Savino got his feet wet in the in the Premier League. Uh, so yeah, I would say that they got a you know pretty good showing. Rode three points first week out. They did what they were supposed to do. Now in the rematch, they get home soil for for Chelsea later this season. So that's my uh, first winner. Yeah, I got Newcastle as a winner for me. Uh, being being, a, being a man down, yes, and pulling off the victory um, is always impressive to say the least. And is it only me, or does Eddie Howe kind of look like a real life Lego person? A little bit. <laughs> yeah. He looks like a real life mini pig. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, he definitely reminds me of a real life. Like if the Lego guy from the Lego movie came to life, mm -hmm. he would look like Eddie Howe. That's for sure. But hey. Shout out to Newcastle, man. A lot of people were high on them this year. I was not one of them. I'm kind of like, uh, yeah, I you think know. they're kind of mid, mid, mid table. Uh, but and we talked about this last week. They just haven't been exciting for so long. Is Newcastle exciting again? 
They might be when they headbutt people. <laughs> I will say that was a fairly cheap red card. I'm not it was, entirely it was, sure. It was. Like the Southampton guy probably should have gotten a card for dramatically acting. It was, yeah, it was, um, it was. Uh, but although if you're short, it's a new team coming back up. How can you let them get under your skin in 20 minutes? Like, yeah, that was. You got to have a little bit more. But they got the they got the points they needed. They got the win with a man okay. down. That's hard to do in the Premier League nowadays. Most of the time, you're playing for a draw when that happens. But to get the yep. win, I think they're a big winner and off to a great campaign. Which again, a lot of people think they're going to have a great campaign. Not one of them, but they showed maybe they have what it takes. So they're another big winner for me. Yeah, uh, my second winner is going to be Brighton. Yeah, we got a huge well, win on the road. The biggest win of the you know by. <laughs> By gold difference of the weekend. You're, you're going to see that our losers are on the other side of these matchups we're talking yeah, about. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, but Brighton had a new head coach, 31 year old American baby, and Herzler yeah. uh, is their new head coach. They're, they've been fun to watch ever since they were brought up. Yes. They're just a fun team. They're really good at home. I love yeah, their stadium. They have uh, new signings, a lot of turnover, as there generally always is with Brighton based yeah. on, you know, they play money ball there in the EPL. Um, and then they just went out. And shut up the Everton crowd oh, um, man. on the road for the first home opener in the last season at Goodison Park. Um, <laughs> Good riddance. Win Jordan Pickford looked like he can't stop anything so bad. They already signed a new goalie to back up Jordan Pickford. I saw. Do uh, they? Uh... They should sign uh, Ethan Horvath. He looked good. Oh, he <laughs> definitely looked. Yeah, that was not. That was that was not good. Um, or I think I, I, think I, I have the video. We can show guy, it. Here. I think the Luton goalie has some time coming off. You know, mm-hmm. he's going to miss some time after running through two defenders like a tank yeah. in their game uh, and getting <laughs> red carded. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Brighton, Brighton's a winner for me. Yeah, both, yeah. You know, physically largest win of the weekend and just, you know, performance wise. They're on top of the table. <laughs> they are in fact on top of the table. We'll get to that later. But um, yeah. and another big winner, it's not always easy when you're supposed to be um a great team and yes they got kind of a uh kind of an easy first match against Ipswich but the, the Arnie slot half wasn't easy though <laughs> yeah no the first half looked terrible but um you know Jurgen Klopp is a legend and to replace him is hard to do and, and to be right. in that shadow and what Jurgen Klopp was good at is at halftime making adjustments that needed to happen in order to win games that's exactly what Arnie slot did against Ipswich this last weekend and they came out fire man it's like they yeah um, the, real, the real Liverpool showed up yeah after halftime yeah sure. and um so I think he in general not the Liverpool team but he is my winner my 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 last winner there yeah also by the way Mo Salah can we regrow the fro because you and I yeah I hate it I can't I'm like, I'm like who is that is that Salah hey, he's <laughs> scoring the goat Salah scored I'm like what happened to the hair? Who's that guy? Yeah, he looks Worked like 40 years older, too. It's it's crazy. It's uh... Yeah, got a little ventilation going up there. Yeah, I don't like um, it. I don't like it at all. Final, my final winner of the week here is uh, Lester. You took <laughs> out a full-strength Tottenham. You, they, I mean, Tottenham was dominant across basically the whole game. If you look at all the stats, they yeah. favor Tottenham in possession in terms of shots. In it terms was of that one control. spell of 20 minutes that just changed the whole yeah, there was, uh, you know, there was an injury time. Uh, Benton Kerr got knocked out uh, on a corner kick, um, wishing a speedy recovery to him. But it seemed like Lester took that time and just regathered themselves and mm-hmm. made, for once in his life, Steve Cooper made proper uh, <laughs> substitutions. Um, so, yeah, they, they drew. Okay, they didn't get the win, but they drew. But... They withstood a team that's picked to be top five in the table, yeah. top six in the table. It's a huge draw. That could be, what if they miss and, relegation by one? Right. And Leicester is a team that's battling relegation. So, yeah, already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> While supposedly battling relegation. Not right now. They're in ninth place. Yes, correct. They are actually, <laughs> Steve Cooper is now ahead of Nottingham Forest in the table. Yeah. Yeah. Well, alphabetically. Yeah. Alphabetically. They're tied, but alphabetically, he's ahead. <laughs> that's funny. Um, but yeah, Leicester, Leicester's my winner there. Just. Good showing. First time back in Premier League in a couple of years. And... It wasn't a great showing, but they just had a... Yeah. Well, they hung in long enough to get a point out of that game. Not a good showing, great result. Let's put it that way. Yes. Yeah. Kind of so, like um, who beat Crystal Palace. Brentford, yes. 
Yeah, that was not. That was a little bit of help with the. Uh, that was that was a little bit of help too. That was a surprising win as well. That was. Well, it shouldn't have been a win, but yeah. I know. Yeah, that was another one. But um, we t- really kind of talked about some of our biggest losers, so we'll get yes. a little bit faster through them. But obviously, the biggest loser of the weekend is is just. We're man, we were low on Everton, but are they, should we have been more? Are they awkward? worse than we thought? <laughs> Jeez, um, they look. Uh, a mess. They're a mess. They're, yeah, they're, they're a straight point mess. Production and they'll they'll figure it out for about six weeks and they'll be just fine. My goodness, what a that they look just like they just learned how to play soccer or football yesterday. Like, it was bad. Yeah, um, they got fans complaining that the PK that wasn't given should have been. No man, the dude fell over his own two left feet. <laughs> he I, did I, fall. I that, that's yeah, not it a was PK for anybody. I don't care who it is. It was just the worst showing of the yeah. weekend. So obviously there are biggest losers. Who else stood out for you as just like a besides the Spurs? Obviously, I mean Tottenham was was I was infuriated after that game. Um, and somebody put it as a Spurs fan put it on uh, Twitter, and I don't mean to make light of this, but I found it funny. They they said I have PTSD, post traumatic Spurs disorder. <laughs> so, so if you actually have PTSD, I apologize for the joke. I just found that funny. Um, I would say that Forrest. Yeah, is a, is a loser. They went up in the 23rd minute. Same old story, though. They don't hold the lead. They dropped points. Brentford and Forest since the start of last year are the two that have dropped the most points from winning positions. Brentford's dropped 30 points from winning positions, and Forest has dropped 28. So, wow. um, that wasn't that wasn't great. You know, still can't clear balls from the box. Mm. Um, so that was, and then uh, quickly, my last loser here. Southampton, you're up a man <laughs> yeah. for 70 minutes. Yeah. Given a chance to win a road game against a team that most people think are a top six team, we're a little lower than mm-hmm. them. But you got to take your shots to win road games against top half of the table teams. You do. The you do. And you're going to stick up. And they just didn't. They didn't. I, props to Newcastle for defending the hell out of their box for 70 minutes down a man. Um, but that's that's a loss for me for Southampton because you had a chance to get above where people thought you were going to be, and now that's a demoralizing loss. How do you get mm-hmm. over that? Not a good way to start the season at all. No. No. And then real real quickly, uh, we, we got to talk about Chelsea. Just and I, maybe I was wrong because I said maybe this is the year that you know they always spend the most amount of money every year. They they have no chemistry. They didn't have. Money. They just made moves. I know they have zero chemistry, and I'm like maybe this is the year it kind of comes together with some of the signing from last year we're playing a full year and, and just zero chemistry still like that no chemistry within that team it's just a bunch of me first and uh yeah, Raheem they, Sterling puts out a statement before the game starts that says he's highly disappointed he wasn't selected for the squad uh, he, day he came back two weeks early to do private workouts with, like <laughs> Yeah, maybe there I was were, wrong. I think I was one wrong. Thing on we discovered Enzo Fernandez is very good at is getting under Holland's skin because he was he and okay. Holland were fighting all day, <laughs> bickering. I mean, back in order to stop that man, the only way to stop him is to get under his skin. That is, and get him a yellow. Yeah, and he still hit a scorcher. So yeah, there you go. Um, a live look at the table here. Obviously, Brighton's in first because of point or goal, goal differential, differential with their three and Arsenal. The and then, the and then it's yeah. Arsenal, Liverpool, Man-, Man City all in a row. So that's kind of like the three that we think are going to be the top three. And then Aston Villa right behind them when their big win as well, which was a big win. I had that as being a draw and I thought it was going to be a draw until the late winner by Aston Villa. So shout out to them. And then Brentford who <laughs> uh, will be short lived more on that later. Man United with what we called the one nil victory over. Yeah. <laughs> we did. We, call, we, we called, called that. that exactly on par. Um, and then, yeah, the bottom Ipswich, the Wolves, which you you had the Wolves actually being relegated, and uh, Everton <laughs> is at the bottom here. So surprisingly, Chelsea's at 17th. But obviously, week one, we don't want to over, you know, right? Um, yeah, analyze I, I, and and I put for my table analysis that the the four teams who were top four last season. Did what they were supposed to do in match week one. They got yep. three points, held serve, did what they were supposed to do. By multiple goals. Um, missed opportunities for mid-table teams to take advantage of either bad matchups or good breaks in their part, you know, like Tottenham, obviously, Forest, and, mm-hmm. you know, some of these others. Um, but we can't really, just because a team is down at the bottom, 
week one doesn't mean that they're going to stay there. Although we could look at Everton and say there's a good possibility. <laughs> I do have Wolves getting relegated, so there's yeah, uh, and I have Ipswich as well, and I think so do you, and they're down there. So it's, yeah, so um, so yeah, it's a little too early to make anything of the table other than the teams that were supposed to win one. Mm-hmm. And only two, t- only two draws. It was only pretty interesting. Two draws. Yes. Before we get into draws, we'll get into that. We'll look up and see what's going on this weekend because we have more matchups, interesting ones as well. Yes. Uh, there isn't like a, I, I guess there is one kind of big game, and that would be on Saturday, um, if you will. And on Sunday, uh, yeah, there's one on Saturday. So we'll, We'll get to that, but uh, here we go. Manchester United starting uh, the week off here again. The first game against yeah. Brighton, who's at the top of the table. <laughs> um, I believe this is in Brighton. Yes. Where they're really good at home. Yeah, Amex Stadium. Yeah, nice stadium. Obviously, man, United didn't look exactly like he, we thought they would look against Fulham do they lose this game <laughs> or, or a draw? Uh, do you, do you have, see them winning? I they don't look good. My, uh, draw of the week, actually. Okay. okay, okay. So I do think that Man U had some better looks than they get credit for. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, they didn't go in, so they didn't score. But I do yeah. think that generally on offense, they looked better. Um Defensively, I thought they were okay, but then again, Fulham is bad on the road, and they they're not good them. offensively. Fulham, they're they're one of those teams that likes to sit back and try to counter when they can. Right. So. Also on the road, like I said last last week, uh, last year I think seventy percent or sixty seven percent of their points came from home games. Mm. Um, so there's that. Um, I don't think Brighton is as good as we saw them be in week one either. Like, I don't think they're running over people. Three no, e- Everton's just that bad, people. <laughs> Everton's bad. They, can't, they haven't been able to score for two seasons now. Yeah. I don't think that's changing. Um, so I have this as my draw of the week, actually. It's going off at plus 275. Yep. Um, I like that. I could see it be a 1-1. Maybe if we're getting crazy with it, 2-2. I don't know that there's four goals in this game. Um, oh, I doubt it. But uh, let's see. Last time, do they have a head-to-head? Last time they played when they played last year, uh, um, Man U won. Man U won two nil. Last time they played. Yeah, let me. See. Which was last May, and that was at Brighton. However, they lost to Brighton at home three one last year as well. So. <laughs> That's Man United for you, people. There you go. That is Man United. So, uh, but if you tally up those goals, they scored the same number of goals. <laughs> Correct. So, yes. Um, yes. So I see this being a draw to start things off. I know it's not sexy, but I do think it's going to be a little bit wide open. There's just going to be some missed shots to keep it a draw. Brighton is actually get this. Yes. Brighton is actually the favorite in yes, this game, but close. Plus one fifty for Brighton. Plus one sixty five. That's also why I kind of chose this as my draw of the week. Is I like it. The money line I think is I like telling it. you one way or the other, really, yeah. with any huge advantage. I mean, if we look at some other um, games, like Man City's minus a thousand to win against Ipswich, who's plus three thousand to win against. We're gonna have to see, yeah. We'll have to see what the total is on that one of goals. <laughs> so. So obviously that's an exaggeration, but like even Tottenham is minus two twenty to beat Everton at home, who's plus six hundred to beat Tottenham on the road. So I think this is my draw because the the money line is so even. Yep. That I'm taking this as the draw because I don't think Man U's as bad at scoring as we saw last week, and I also don't think Brighton mm-hmm. is as good at scoring as we saw. Last what is week. the total line here? It is uh, two and a half for. Brighton Man U. Yeah, I see. I see two and a half. I see three. Let's see. I see over two and a half. Yeah, and I see three on DraftKings. Oh, man. Uh, Yeah, I think draw is the best play here. Yeah. I could see this being a 2 2, which would go over. I could see it being a 1 1. I could see it being a 0 0. Yeah, but I think the the draw. I'm not touching 
either side of that as well. So if you're going to bet on this game, the best bet is to take the draw, plus 275. That's what I would say. If you want a fun bet, uh, anytime <laughs> goal scorer Anthony is going off at plus 400. Huh? <laughs> That's a fun bet. If you like what sweating for a whole money. game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to sit there and watch this game and sweat the whole time, that's a fun one. 7 30 um, a.m. Eastern on uh <laughs> yeah. Saturday morning. Jesus. Not enough alcohol can be consumed to place that one to watch the game. No. <laughs> no, Crys- so Crystal Palace. West Ham. West Ham, man, I don't know what to take of this team. A second they, London they, derby for them in a row. Correct. They on paper they should be good, uh, but ask the villa just a little bit better. Um and uh, they're not even the favorite here because Crystal Palace at home is the favorite at plus 110. West Ham plus 230. The draw here is actually the best draw odds. Oh, second best draw odds of the week. Plus 260. Um, again, this this has draw written all over it, doesn't it? But I kind of like Crystal Palace at home here. I do too. I think they were, they were by far the better team last week. Mm-hmm. than Brentford was. They had the free kick that went in, but the whistle blew for a stupid foul that's not a foul. This guy just stood still. The other dude fell down. Um, so that got taken off, and then there was, um, what, the offside? There was one. He was yeah. offside by like a half inch or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a 2.5 total as well. Yeah. Man, I, I may go. I, I, I like the under a one nil crystal palace win or something like that. It just seems like, I don't, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you West think? Ham didn't, didn't look great against Aston Villa. They didn't. They, they were did. able to get the equalizer, but then gave it up in the end of the second half. So yeah, uh, man, this West Ham team is like the t- toughest team to actually analyze this year on. Yeah, to be honest with you, this was my second pick for draw. I know was we it had two. Yeah, but this was my second pick. Okay, because I don't know if you're Crystal Palace, how you get over that support, like should have been a win uh, loss. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe they come out swinging at home. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't like the total on this. Uh, if I had to, I would say the under. And I Crystal Palace at plus one ten. I mean. West to win away West Ham. That's kind of been their Achilles heel the last few years as well. Yeah. Uh, so the best bet's probably either taking Crystal Palace or the draw. Oh my eyes. Yeah. Fulham and Leicester City. You and I disagree on this one, sort of. This is my draw of the week. Plus two seven D odds for the draw. Uh Fulham, just a not an inspired team. They like to sit back and counter. Leicester, I think, emotional after last week's tie <laughs> with Tottenham. It isn't Fulham, where Fulham is well, better, Marty, like you Marty said. yelling F you to like every Tottenham player as he came off the field. <laughs> <laughs> I know you say, and you know that Fulham is really good at home. Yes. I, 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 I This has zero, zero, nil, nil written all over, and this also has a two and a half line as well. I'm picking for goals. Fulham to win. Okay, under two and a half though, right? I mean, this... yeah, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. Let's put it this way: A. Fulham is way better uh, at home than on the road. They played pretty even with Man U, who we can all agree is better than Leicester, right? Yes. Leicester basically got bailed out by a 15 minutes news fest from. Tottenham. <laughs> um, and the last time Steve Cooper went to Fulham, he lost with Forrest five nothing. Obviously, different teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What not? But he still runs the same system. <laughs> True. Fulham beat him, beat that system a bunch of times uh, at Forest. So I'm going with Fulham to win here, just by like. One goal. I don't think it's going to be. Do you like the under of two and a half? I love the under of two and a half goals. I would take the under of two and a half. Yeah, that's almost like that bet better than my draw pick. I may have to change my draw pick. Another one nothing (laughs) game, and it's and it's one nothing Fulham. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm might be two nothing Fulham, but I I I'm taking my draw back. I'm liking the under. I have another game. I'm going to pick for draw now. Okay, there you go. Taking it back. Never happened. 
Uh, we're not betting the Man City Ipswich. We're not. Game. That's. We are not. Ridiculous. However, if you want to just have some fun, it is plus twenty eight hundred for Ipswich. <laughs> so uh, that will be Ipswich a win. Ipswich isn't beating Man City at Man City. That's not happening. Uh, if you want to look at the total, just to look at it, it is three and a half. Oh, I mean, I guess the better bet is how many goals is. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not touching this game. Um, there isn't a platter, a silver platter out there. There is no long enough pole for me yeah. to bet on this game on any of those things. So moving on to Southampton hosting your Forest, <laughs> a small edge to Hampton plus one fifty, plus one eighty for Nottingham Forest draws the best odds for a draw on the table plus two thirty. Are you being a homer here? I do think Forest probably beats <laughs> Southampton. Now, now, okay, Southampton's not a good team. They're not. No. Yeah, they, no, they had a not. good result. But they're not a good team. Yes, Forest is a better team. They are a better team as long as they can clear balls from the box, which they don't do great all the time. So I'm with you. I think Nottingham Forest wins this game. I think talent-wise and skill-wise, I think Forest being from like a neutral perspective, I think Forest has the players to go out and beat uh, Southampton. I do think this goes over two and a half goals, though. I do. I I'm, think I think, I think two like to one, one, three to two, three to one, like that. Yeah. So I'm taking the over and, and Forest here. That's kind of my uh, two picks that's on this would, one. That's what I would take as well. <sighs> Boy, Please, dear God, Tottenham win against <laughs> Everton. Imagine if they tie against Everton at the time against. Le- oh my goodness! At home, Tottenham facing Everton, only a minus two fifty um, favorite here, which is crazy. Twenty on DK, but yes. Is there? What's the line? I'm trying to find if to win by two goals. For What's Tottenham. the win for Tottenham to win by two goals? Yeah, yeah I'm trying to find it here. I'm spread here. Um, I'm looking for it. Here we go. Oh, winning more. Here we go. Oh, it's still uh, minus win by one. two Jesus. is plus three fifty. So okay, what about one and a half? I see Tottenham to win by one goal at plus three hundred. That can't be right. That that would just be to win is minus two fifty. Yeah, I know. Well, I would take that in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. See, sometimes Tottenham's, Tottenham's going to win, people. See, sometimes it pays to like look at the weirdness of lines. Yes. I'll look this to NASCAR real quick. I know a lot of, you know, I'm more familiar with NASCAR betting. I yes. write weekly NASCAR things. Sometimes you can find really good odds where they'll have mm-hmm. a team to win. But that team only has one car, and the driver is going off at worse odds. <laughs> yep. There were shorter odds than the team is to win. So this is one of those weird cases where Tottenham to win is actually shorter odds than them winning by one goal, which is plus 300. Yeah, take that now. Plus 350. I would also look at two goals and <laughs> take that as well. Tottenham wins. Well, I think we're both in favor oh, of that one god if i have to come on here next week and tottenham hasn't won <laughs> yeah, you, you may just cry for 40 minutes in here <laughs> <laughs> i have one loser of the week and it's just tottenham <laughs> and then i'm gonna go on a rant for half an hour about it yeah right. yeah acid villa hosting arsenal this is pretty much the game of the weekend yeah. uh, acid villa looked really good against west ham i'm not gonna lie arsenal also looked good over the weekend as well arsenal is a minus 125 favorite going into villa uh, the draws comes in at plus 270. What do you like here? What do you like here? Because I have my, an interesting take on this. You have an inter- – okay. So let's hear your take first before – How would you – would you be su- surprised if this game ended up 2-2? Cause I wouldn't be. Or 1-1. I would say a draw is – is likely i don't it's either arsenal winning or it's a draw i am officially making this my draw of the week if it goes two two then arteta is going to make them run four and a half miles in practice because good defense (laughs) like they pride themselves on defense (laughs) yeah i could see this being just a one one nil nil game 
Um, Villa's a good team, man. And Arsenal's going on the road. Last year, Villa played the top of the table really well. They, yeah, they, they beat did. Man City. They beat Arsenal. They beat uh, the bejesus out of Tottenham when Tottenham Correct. had it in their hands. to. If all they had to do was beat uh, Aston Villa, and they would have secured a top four, but they, they couldn't do it. So why not a tie? That's all I'm saying. Why not a tie? Give it to me. I could, I'm, I'm putting I'm speaking it into existence. A tie. My tie of the week. My draw of the week. Sorry. My draw of the week. There you go. But you have Arsenal winning. Yeah, probably. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked <laughs> if Villa beat. I mean, they're pretty close. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if Villa pulled off an early season, quote unquote, upset. Although they're the home team, but they're not favored. Um, but I do think, I do think ultimately Arsenal just pulls it. There's a reason they fell just two points shy of Man City last year. True. Like, they're really good. Um, all right. All right. I'm, I'm as long totally as Gabriel there. Jesus doesn't get his uh, rear end grabbed. You like, know he likes it. The Wolves guy was doing. I don't, that was weird. <laughs> Speaking of Wolves, Wolves yeah. are hosting Chelsea. Now, Chelsea needs this win bad and bad and bad oh and bad. Oh, my God. If Chelsea loses the Wolves, it's going to be... Minus 141. Do they put it together? <laughs> I think Chelsea wins this game, but I think it's going to be closer than people think. I think they only win by a goal. Yeah. Wouldn't be shocked if it was one nothing. Yeah. Well, me neither. So, I'm, I like the under on this as well. Um, and Chelsea, yeah. you know, this is the game they need to, to, to get that win, get that three points, and get back on. The table in a good spot because right now yeah, if they lose, then um, they're going to already start calling for the, the manager's head. They're going to be burning down. Um, Stanford maybe Bridge. they shouldn't have 47 <laughs> dudes on their squad to have to balance. Yeah. 47 dudes that are all worth 60 pa- million pounds um, and more. Yes. Bournemouth hosting Newcastle. Interesting game. Newcastle is the favorite, but only at plus 120. Bournemouth plus 200. The draws at 270. I like Newcastle winning on the road. I do too. I have, one, I have Newcastle plus one, whatever it is now, plus yep. 120. I'm taking it. Uh, 121. Um, um, I will take yeah. that. They Newcastle went down a man. They still won. Um, Imagine what they can do at full strength. Yeah. And Bournemouth got handed terrible clearances from Forrest and <laughs> bad subs by Nuno. Mm-hmm. Um, and Newcastle doesn't drop points. Nope. From they do not winning spots. So, yeah, I still think we have questions about how Bournemouth is scoring without Solanke there. Yeah, that's going to be uh, a uh, – we're going to be talking about that a lot of, this year. <laughs> a boatload of Bournemouth's goals last year came from subs. So, if, you know, their manager isn't making the right calls at the right time. Now, keep in mind that last year, Newcastle did not beat Bournemouth. They drew once, and Bournemouth beat them in the same fixture last year, 2-0. But yeah, they're different but teams. Bournemouth about... is a way different team this year. They're, they're they're not as good as they were last year. Right. Bournemouth lost some key pieces. Yeah. Um, Newcastle had terrible injuries last year. So um, I'm with you. I'm going Newcastle. And it's sitting at two and a half here as well. The under of two and a half is uh, minus 105. We'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Take that. You, you can get a minus three. Wow. Take that. Um. So you can at least have that draw factor in there as well. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Liverpool at home or in a slot. First home game. My boys, Liverpool, never walk alone. Minus 455 favorites over Brentford. Interesting little subplot here. I do have a bet for this game. Okay. I'll just, the subplot here. Yes. During the preseason. Yes. Carv- Carvalho, was, he's a young player. Light it up for Liverpool. And then at the last second, they sold him, not in a, 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 a loan, sort of sold him to Brentford. I don't think he played last week, but I think he plays this week. And just a little, um, you know, subplot. Yes. That maybe he was uh, has a little bit of revenge on his mind here. But, hey, he gets the playing time. So, can't be too mad. But that's the subplot. Obviously, Liverpool by two. Um, it's my pick here. Yeah, uh, you can get under three and a half goals for even money. <laughs> yeah. 
Take that. <laughs> well, I'm taking that because it yeah. either likely ends 3 nothing Liverpool or 2-1 Liverpool. Yeah. Both of which are under 3.5 and, and give you even money return. So. Take Liverpool under 3.5 all day, every day. Yeah. There you have it. We did it. We, we came. Did. We, done, we conquered. We, we done did that thing. 10 games this weekend. No Monday games this week. Yeah. Kind of nice. Yes, it's, it is nice. Didn't have to record like I had to record the Tottenham game, and then I had to tell everybody I was watching it later. Had to put my phone on Do Not Disturb for like four hours, so I didn't get any <laughs> notes. Uh, you you told me, and I didn't. I was way, like, "Oh wait." I have a gripe with the Premier League app, which wouldn't let me turn off notifications. Uh oh. I don't know if there was a. I don't know if there was a, a tech thing or did whatever. You have but to, did you have to delete the app and then reinstall it? I may have to. I don't know. There was also <laughs> weird stuff going on with it. They had. When the lineups came out for the game, they had Son and Solanke listed with Romero and Van de Ven for Spurs defenders. <laughs> like the starting back four was Son, Romero, Van de Ven, Solanke. That's a very interesting strategy there. <laughs> Old strategy, Cotton. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. It may have worked better. Honestly. I don't know. Maybe they would have won if they did that. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. Um, yeah, it was. It was. It was odd. Um, but yeah, so maybe they'll get it fixed. Maybe I have to un, in, you know, uninstall it, <laughs> reinstall it to get it to work, which would be a slight annoyance there. But yeah, well, there you go. Ten games all between seven thirty a.m. Eastern Saturday and eleven thirty a.m. Eastern Sunday. Let's go! I'm that. excited. And college football's back this this weekend. College as football's well. back. We get NASCAR on Saturday night. Oh, get... it's gonna be a good weekend, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna barbecue some food. Good so... baseball. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> this, the baseball season's in the review mirror. It's really not. Your Padres are in the playoff picture. I know. And with the playoffs come, I'll watch. If they hold on. That's what they do. They always disappoint me <laughs> in, in September. I'm not even. Yeah, but anyways, enough anyway, about that. That's for a different podcast for a different day. We're and keeping God, an EPL. Hope, That's right. God, I hope I don't have to cry next week. Yeah, I hope it's just a half hour of you <laughs> ranting on the on Spurs the whole time, and uh, it'll uh, make for good uh, entertainment. That's for sure. But I think they got it, man. Everton is uh, God. can't score a goal to save their relegating lives. Let's put it that way. Yeah. All right, next week we'll have more winners and losers from this weekend. I'm sure there's going to be some surprises like there were this last weekend. I'm sure um, the favorites will win, obviously. But like I said, Arsenal has a little bit of a, t a tougher test than I think Man City had against Chelsea last week. So we'll see how it all pans out. And Mo Salah needs to grow his hair back. Please, Mo Salah, please grow your hair back so I can spot you on the pitch. Until next week, Matt Sells and myself returning for episode three of Keeping It EPL. Enjoy your weekend of football, everybody.